Over the years, we have seen all kinds of cars, some fast, some stylish and some, well, not so great. Among them, a few have earned a reputation for being the worst. One such car, according to a special episode of Top Gear, was Lexus SC430. Driving this thing is absolutely diabolical. They call it disappointing in most every single category. Driving dynamics, price and design. But was it really that bad? Or did it have at least one hidden strength? Could this worst car with its decent design actually surprise us in the digital wind tunnel? Believe me or not, but what you're about to see might just change the way you look at the SC430 forever. The front experiences what is known as a stagnation point, the place where the airflow directly hits the surface and slows down, creating a zone of high pressure. This is typical for most cars, but what is particularly interesting is how the SC430 manages the flow from a pressure view. If we take a look at the 3D pressure visual, it becomes clear that a significant amount of air is directed toward this frontal region. Immediately behind that, we find two smaller air inlets, on either side and just above a main inlet. Cooling is essential for this vehicle, after all, it houses a 4.3 liter naturally aspired V8 engine that generates considerable heating during run. While the placement of these inlets is functional, the setup could have been optimized further. If the inlets had been positioned lower, closer to the stagnation point where pressure is highest, cooling efficiency would improve, allowing more direct and forceful airflow into the radiator and engine bay. From there, the airflow accelerates over the front end, reducing pressure. However, an important aerodynamic characteristic here is that this pressure difference remains fairly balanced above and below the front section. What does it mean? Simply, car avoids generating lift at the front, a crucial factor when it comes to maintain high speed stability. Next, the flow moves up the hood and approaches the windshield. Now, this is where many vehicles face a challenge. Typically, the airflow slams into the base of the windshield and distillates, often detaching and creating a turbulent wake. This not only adds drag, but can also influence cabin noise and airflow towards the rear. However, the SC430 takes a different path. Thanks to the smooth, shallow angle of the windshield, the airflow stays attached longer. The transition is soft and progressive, meaning there is a minimal turbulence, a positive outcome for performance. Once the flow passes over the windshield, it begins to travel along the roofline. This area presents another aerodynamic issue, roof area lift. In many cars, low pressure over the roof pulls the vehicle upward, reducing grip and aerodynamic efficiency. Here we can observe that the entire roof is enveloped in a low pressure zone. However, what Lexus did right is how they shaped the rear transition. On most cars, the flow detaches violently at the rear window or trunk edge, forming a large suppression bubble and increasing drag. But the SC430 features a remarkably smooth roof to trunk curve. As a result, the airflow stays mostly attached. In the friction visual, we notice a small separation zone, but crucially, it reattaches later on. That reattachment plays a key role in reducing overall drag and turbulence. What is also worth noting is that visually, the SC430 doesn't appear to rally on any conventional aerodynamic tools. There are no front splitters, vortex generators or rear wings. However, a closer look reveals a functional rear spoiler integrated into the trunk line. Now, adding aerodynamic components such as wings or spoilers isn't just about look, it's about making them effective. In other words, they must be positioned in a way that exposes them to high energy clean airflow. Without that, they won't generate meaningful downforce. In this case, the smooth rear end design helps retain airflow energy. There is no major separation before the spoiler, meaning it faces strong pressure buildup, and that is exactly what we want. The spoiler is small, nothing like a Porsche 911s, but it's utterly functional. Of course, we must keep in mind that this isn't a racing car. The SC430 is a luxury Grand Tourer, 
elegance take a priority over extreme air performance. Still, the spoiler's performance shows that Lexus engineers paid attention to air performance. And if you would like to find out how your own vehicle performs aerodynamically, head over to osairlab.com and send us a request. We'll take a deep look at your car performance and investigate it, how aerodynamic it really is, leaving you with a full report and analysis. Let's turn to the rear diffuser. A diffuser is meant to expand airflow and accelerate it underneath the car, reducing pressure and enhancing ground effect. While the SC430 features a diffuser, it's not the most efficient design. The sharp edges suggest an attempt at performance, but unfortunately the exhaust outlets interrupt the flow. They are positioned directly in the path of exiting air, blocking it right at the moment it should be expanding and accelerating upward. This reduces the effectiveness of the diffuser, as we can see from the airflow exiting more horizontally than upward. However, this design compromise may have been influenced by practical considerations, most likely packaging. The SC430's trunk is small and when the convertible roof is stowed, it's even smaller. It's possible the exhaust placement was a trade-off to make more usable space in the rear. Still, despite the drawback, the weight behind the car remains small and controlled. This is a strong indicator of a well-designed shape. Now let's shift our focus to the wheels. In recent years we have seen a rise in the use of aero optimized rims, especially Teslas or even Formula 1. The reason is simple, the more complex the wheel design, the more turbulence it creates. By using closed smooth surfaces, manufacturers can minimize drag and help keep airflow attached. Surprisingly, Lexus was already thinking this way in the early 2000s. The SC430 features rims that are largely flat and enclosed in the center. From a drag standpoint, this is impressive. When we analyze the friction visual, the airflow around the wheels separates gently and more importantly, the weight behind the wheels is minimal especially compared to our cars. It's generally stunning. On the downside, we come to a familiar issue, the side mirrors. These are one of the most aerodynamically efficient parts of nearly any car. And the SC430 is not exception. The mirrors create noticeable wake and low pressure zones behind them, increasing drag. However, the overall impact isn't catastrophic. More importantly, the pillars, which frame the windows of the car, are smooth, rounded and well integrated. This helps prevent suppression and keeps airflow stable along the sides of the car. That's another smart design choice from Lexus engineers. The Lexus SC430, once dubbed by Top Gear as the worst car of its time, may not have succeeded in performance, handling or even aesthetic appeal to many. Its interior was criticized, and its driving dynamics didn't impress the reviewers. But from an aerodynamic perspective, it's a different story entirely. The SC430 features a clean flowing shape with minimal separation zones. Many modern designers, especially in the Grand Touring segment, could take a few notes from how this car manages airflow. Based on my analysis, the simulation of the SC430 builds a drag coefficient of 0.27, which is quite impressive, and the lift coefficient sits at 0.1, again a solid figure for a luxury convertible. While it doesn't produce significant downforce, that is not its purpose. What we can say for sure is that the Lexus SC430 is a remarkably smooth car.